Hey guys, it's Kelly. Hey, I got page number 22 finally done, called it Colorful Comfort. And it's for the Creative Arts Collaboration uh, group that I'm on on Facebook. And the hashtag this month is Color of the Year Art. And it's from the Pantone, uh, Pantone Color Choices of Rose Quartz and Serenity. It's like a pale blue and a pale pink. Really pretty colors. And um, yeah, and I decided to use some of the designs by Rin Stamps. I love her hummingbirds. So this is like a three for video where I got a lot of things addressed in here that I've been longing to do. So hashtag color of the year art. You guys gotta put that into YouTube and you'll find all kinds of different artistic things using um, Rose Quartz and Serenity from uh, the colors of the year. So check that out. So I was just starting with some watercolor. I do not have those colors, so I had to mix them. So I mixed them with some red and some white in my watercolors until I got the color pink that I was looking for. And the, the lighting in here isn't that great. I've kind of tried to brighten it up and, and tone it down, and I can't, it's not true um, as far as the video goes. The picture is a little bit more true, but it shows a little bit more red. But Either way, I think it turned out nice. So I got blues and pink ruling this page. And I'm just using some 90 pound watercolor paper. I needed to keep the kind of thin because it's going in my um, my little book of 28 pages, which is really, really full right now. But it's coming along great. I'll show you some of the pages in here. So there might be a glare on here, and that's because I tried to get a little bit brighter so you could see the colors. And I'm hoping that when it uploads, it won't be as blinding. But I'm just um, mixing my colors first, mixing my blue, and then just real quick slapping it down. Because I just wanted to use these colors in the background just to complement the hummingbird the way I wanted to color it. So there it is. Slapping it down super, super easy. And then drying it in between. Because you can see the paper is curling. But I needed to use that 90 pound instead of my 140 pound, which is much better watercolor paper. But I need it to fit in my book without adding too much bulk. So. And then I dry it. We're good to go. I had a little green at the bottom and I took that out. I didn't like it, so I just covered it up with some pink. And then I added some splash marks. You can hardly see it in the end, but just um, splash marks with water and then dabbed it up with a paper towel just to try and get some interest in the background other than just two tones. But it worked out in the end anyway. So I am using the Hummingbirds. I'll have all the links to where you can get um, Rin's gorgeous Hummingbird stamps. I'll have the links below for you. There are so many, and she does these herself. She hand draws them and then has them made. And these stamps, I always rant and rave about them because they are the best. But these hummingbirds are so soothing to color. It's the best. So and I'll show you how I color it. I did the background with watercolor, and then I decided using tense pens to color the hummingbird and the hibiscus because I wanted it to be quite intense. So I'm using Versamark ink and my um, embossing powder and the embossing powder that I'm using is detail embossing powder by recollections it's a signature a special an ebony it's really really fine and when it dries it looks wet it's I, it's one of my favorites um, as far as embossing powder goes so and I use the same embossing powder for both of these and again just versa ink and used my embossing buddy on there which I was so excited that I actually remembered I'm forever in a hurry so I just stamp it and then forget to use my embossing buddy and then I've got little specks of embossing powder everywhere and I don't get that really nice crisp image and this one worked out nice I had a little blur on the um, bird's tail the hummingbird's tail but in the end you can't even tell so and I wish that the camera would pick up how um, when you emboss it, it shines and actually looks wet. It's very, very cool. I left it in there hoping it would catch it, but I can see it's not really catching it very well. 
So, and when you when you stamp and you know you're going to color it with um, some wet medium, stamping it with embossing powder um, really helps keep your color where you want it. So that's just a tip if you're first starting in coloring these detailed images and you want to just try some things. Um, using embossing powder is a really good um, key to keep your colors from running into another one another. If you're using watercolor pencils or watercolors, things like that. So, and I sped this up pretty quick. I used all different colors. I don't know all the colors that I used, but I only have an intense uh, set of 12 colors. So I just decided to use some purples and some yellows and blues, pinks too. And I tried to get them to all blend together as easily as possible. There weren't any lines in them. So in the rule with these pencils, I'm taking the color straight from the pencil for this bird because I want it to go exactly where I want it to go and I want intense dark shades in some spots and then blended shades in other spots. And there I'm adding some dark stuff at the tips of the wings. So the less water, the more pigment you'll get on there and, and this is these these intense pencils, I always rant and rave about them because they are the best. And um, you have to play with them to get your um, pigment right so you know how much water to use. So, and then I, I um, kind of smeared the pale pink across the back of the bird. And it wound up looking nice. Now I'm using yellow for the head. and orange on the top. Sorry, my husband came in to say goodnight. <laughs> so yeah, I'm using orange for the feathers on the top that are all ruffled in there. And then I wanted the orange to kind of bleed into the blue. smear it down. This is great therapy guys. Coloring these things is so relaxing. It's probably not as relaxing to watch it but I have a lot of people that um, comment on my videos that say they want to see that coloring process and it takes time and it's boring to watch so um, if I speed it up it at least gives you the gist of it. Just play with it and just do it. If you don't like with these pencils, if you if the color's too dark, you don't like where it is, just use a paper towel and sop it up, and you're good. But my pencil, I'm holding in my left hand, and it's off the the screen. You can't really see it, but I'm taking the color directly from the pencil because I want that really really vibrant color. And hopefully, you can see there where the yellow kind of just blends right into that pale pink on the back of the hummingbird. Now for the hibiscus, I use yellow, orange, and red, and that's not the names of the colors, but um, that's basically what I use. And I actually colored right on it with just little, a little bit of color here and there, and then I'm just using water to spread that color around how I like it. And I just wanted it to be colorful, a little bit different, unusual. I wanted yellow at the tips to kind of set off the yellow that's on the hummingbird and then I wanted it darker in the middle so I added more orange and more red towards the center of it and then my yellow was kind of getting a little bit too pale so I had a little bit more and then just worked that color around until I liked the effect that it had until it blends nice There's no wrong to doing it. Oh, off screen it looks like I colored the um, the bottom of it a little bit green, so I must have forgot to record that. But I'm leaving this in here too because I wanted to show you that if I'm not sure how my stamp or color is going to look on my on my um, project, um, 
trick that I've told you guys about a billion times is stamp it on your tissue paper and then hold it over your project and see what you think. Like placement, color of the ink that you want to use, all that good stuff. And I'm glad that I do this because I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've, the color that I chose. I'm like, whew, I'm glad I did that because I did not like the way that looked. So, and this was, um, I didn't want it overpowering. Probably a little darker than I should have gone, but I don't care. I went with it. I was having fun with this. Very relaxing. I have so missed my creative time. Just haven't been able to do it. So, and that is also all the stamps that I used in this are uh, designs by Rin Stamps. All the links will be below in the description bar. I love that one too. kind of like swirly bubbles. I had to fight off accenting those because they're not my focus point, but <laughs> my focal point. But I wanted to play with those a little bit more, but I decided not to. So what am I adding on there? I wanted some shimmer on my bird. So I'm using Perfect Pearls. Uh, and the color I'm using is Perfect Pearls. And I'm just adding it um, on the wings and the back and the tail. And it adds a really pretty shimmer can't really see it in the video very well. Incastella would have worked would have, would work really really well here, but I don't have that. But I've seen people use it and I really like it. And then after you put that uh, perfect pearls on there, you have to use a really fine spray of water, just a mist to set it. So I just want to add that in there. I ha I did that off screen cuz my mister was a little too gloppy, so I had to do it over the garbage and hold it far away just to make sure that I didn't lose my stamping and smear anything. So the the sentiment that I decided to go with was colorful comfort because this was comforting to me. So when I just used Tim Holtz stickers and just stuck them down super super easy. This page didn't take very long at all and I just loved every second of it. So that's black soot Distress ink that I'm using just to very, very roughly highlight my sentiment. I'm doing it um, outside of the lines, just exaggerating it, just to add some interest to it. I kind of like doing that. Renier does that uh, on Create Boutique. She does that with her sentiments, and I, I got that from her. I love how she does that. So, and then I decided that after I was shading that, my bird and my flower need a little bit of shading underneath it. So just really lightly, had some water and some black soot and just added some shadows underneath the bird and the flower. Really, really subtle. I didn't want to overdo it. And I think it adds to it. I like using the black soot as long as I'm not doing it on... Um, like uh, Mod Podge or something like that. It won't stay on that. So, But I like using Black Set for my shadowing and shading if I can. Black Set with water. And there it is. Wish you could see the shimmer on there. It's very subtle, but it's very realistic, I think. So quick flip through my book. Um, super, super fast. Just showing you guys some of the pages that I've done love how the book came out. I'm almost done with it. It's taken me over a year because life happens. I don't have anywhere near as much creative time as I wish I had. So there it is. I just put some tape on the back of that. Two-sided tape. It's my score tape. And stuck it to my book and called it done. And hopefully I will have some time tonight. I'm hoping to do some more pages in my book. Super, super quick ones. It's about all I got time for. So, And it's five and a half by four and a half is the size of that. Not a big space. Easy to work with. There it is. I hope you guys like it. Don't forget to check the links out below and don't forget to like, comment, and share. And thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it and thanks for being patient as I haven't done a video in quite some time. So let me know what you think of it. Thanks, guys.